Hey, people. This is Miss Etheridge. Going to cover pages 675 in your textbook through page 678, hopefully. That's our plan. All right, so I need you to have your textbook out, and I need you to follow along with me. And anything that I write down, you are going to write down. So let's get this covered. So today we're looking at solving problems with volume cylinders, cones, and spheres. Now, I've got my calculator out, so I'll be using it too. So hopefully you got yours at your desk. All right, so I'm on page 675. I'm looking up at the example. It says the volume formula for a cone is the same whether or not the vertex is directly above the center of the base. What is the volume of the cone? So they went through setting it up for you. They picked out that your radius is 6 and that your height is 5. They have used the formula for a cone, one-third pi r squared times height. They plugged in their amount, so all they want you to do is use your calculator and find that amount. So take just a moment and find that. And then, so click pause and then come back. All right, so hopefully you did one-third times. Now, I'm using 3.14 as pi. Um, we, we didn't say to leave this in terms of pi, so we're going to go ahead and multiply with it. Now, I know in Ms. Hardison's syndrome, her calculators are set where if you hit the pi key, it you puts in an equivalent amount. My calculators don't do that. So my people, we still need to type in 3.14. If you are Hardison's people, you can hit the pi key but you may be a digit or two different than the answers that I get, but it's okay because remember, pi is an irrational number and this is an estimate or an approximation. We are rounding the numbers, so we're okay with what we're gonna find. All right, and then I've got six squared times five. So I'm getting right at 188.4. And we'll just say units because they didn't give us any and cubed because volume is always cubed. Hopefully you saw that on your iReady yesterday. You had to select the units. All right, now let's get to work down here. Number one, it says that the figure shown is made up of a cone and a half sphere. It says, what is the volume of the figure? Show your work, use 3.14 for pi. All right, so let's look at what we got. Let's focus on our um, half sphere first. Now, we didn't write down a formula for half sphere, but we did for a sphere. So I just want half of it. So our formula for a sphere was 4 thirds pi r cubed. We said that that third r came because there was not a height in a sphere. It's just another radius. So that's why we don't have the height. All right, so let's plug in what we've got. So we've got one half, four thirds, 3.14. And they tell us they're looking for the volume. Let me look and see what they've given us. And our radius is actually going to be, I think from right here, to here, okay, that's our radius. So they're telling you that the total height is 15, height of the cone is 11, so 15 minus 11 gives us four. So four is our radius. All right, and we plug that into our calculator. So I've got one half times four thirds. And, I, and again, if you're using Ms. Hardison's calculator, she has her fractions set up a little bit different. You know what you need to do. So I'm right at um, 133.97. And... Since we're rounding, let's go ahead, let's just say this is 134, because if I was to round to the nearest tenth, that nine would bump up. So let's just say we've got 134, we'll be okay for what we're doing. All right, so this was our half sphere. 
Now let's do our cone. So we've got formula for a cone, one third pi r squared times height. So I've got my one third, oops, my 3.14. My radius, which we know if this is the radius going this way, it's also this way because it's equal. So 4 squared and height of the cone is 11. Right, so we're punching that into our calculator. So 1 third times 3.14, oh, I like to see that, times 4 squared times 11. So I've got volume of that at 184.2, right, we'll round to there. And then it said, what is the volume of the figure? So we need to add the two numbers, so 134 plus 184.2. So we're right at 318.2 centimeters cubed would be our volume. So we just had to break it down, find the volume of each piece. Okay. All right, let's keep moving. So on the next page at the top, it says the figure shown is made up of a half sphere and a cylinder. The volume of a figure of is about 497 cubic, sorry, cubic meters, and it says, what is the height of the cylinder? Show your work. All right, so let's set it up. So we've got the half sphere again. So that's volume equals one-half times four-thirds times pi times radius cubed, and we're looking for, to and we've got the total volume, so that takes care of the top half, and then the volume of the bottom would be pi times r squared times height, okay? So that is your half sphere plus your cylinder. All right, now let's plug in the numbers that we know. So we have 497 for total volume. I'm going to keep all these little fractions. It says to use 3.14 for pi. Right. They have given us 5 meters for the radius. And I don't know the H. Now, the calculator is going to do all of this beautiful work for you. Okay. So we are looking for, now, one thing I will, um, I'm going to kind of divide it up. I'm going to give you this so that you see the total for the half sphere and then add it to see this because I want to make sure this plus sign that you don't miss that. Okay. All right. So if I plug in one half times, whoops, times four-thirds times 3.14 times five cubed. I'm looking at 261.7, we'll say. I don't want to round it too much. Plus and I have 3.14 times 5 squared, so 78.5 H. So I'm going to bring down my 497. What you really have here is just a two-step equation. We solved these back in the beginning of the year. So let's subtract our 261.7 from each side. So these are gone. I'm going to use this wonderful tool, and I get 235.3 equals 78.5 H. So this is saying this 
times something is this number, so we just divide. We do the opposite, so 78.5. Now, that's still in my calculator, so I'm just going to hit the divide key, so 78.5, and we're looking right at 2.9997, so we're saying it is about 3 meters for your height, okay? All right, sounds pretty good. Let's keep moving. All right, number three, it says that a cylinder and cone have the same radius and the same volume. The height of the cone is 12 centimeters. What is the height of the cylinder? All right, now remember, it takes three cones to equal the one cylinder when they are the same radius, okay? So we're looking at that, and it says the height of the cone is 12 centimeters, so if we think, okay, three cones, what are we going to do here? So 12 divided by 3 gives us 4 centimeters. So that cylinder would have to be 4 to compensate for it being a taller, uh, for the cone being taller. Okay. All right. Uh, now it said that David chose D as the correct answer. How might he have gotten that answer? So maybe he multiplied by 3 instead of dividing by 3. So he multiplied by three. Instead of dividing by three. All right, I'm going to keep moving. Right, now I'm going to um, I'm going to skip over the top one. I want to look at number five. I'm on page six seventy seven. Now, they are asking us a lot of things here. It says, tell whether each statement is true or false. And we basically have, look at your numbers. You've got the same radius on everything. You have the same height on everything. And we're just comparing them. It's talking about volume and all of these. So before I try to compare anything, let's just find the volume of all these things. You basically have a cone, a cylinder, and a half sphere. That's your, that's your three shapes. Okay, so let's just find that and then we'll be able to work with what we've got. All right, so for the cone, remember our formula is one-third pi r squared times height. All right, everything is sixes, so we're doing one-third times 3.14 times six squared times six. And I probably could have left this in terms of pi, but we'll just go ahead and use it. We'll still be able to uh, answer our problems just as easily. So six squared and times six. All right, so our cone is right at 226.08. Okay, so that's the cone. All right, now let's do, let's just do the cylinder. I'm going to do it over here on the side, wherever you have room. So that's pi r squared times height. So 3.14 times my radius squared times my height. And I really could have, we already know the um, cone, and we just said that it takes three cones to make a cylinder of the same radius, same height. I could just take this number and multiply by three, or I can just do the math here. It's going to be the same either way. So 3.14 times 6 squared times 6 is 678.24. Right, and then we've got the half sphere. So that is one half times four thirds pi r cubed. All right, so one half times four thirds times 3.14 times six 
cubed. So one half times four thirds times three point one four times six cubed. So the half sphere is 452.16. All right, now I've got some numbers I can look. All right, it says the volume of figure two is twice the amount of figure one. All right, so figure two is the cylinder, which is the 678.24 plus the half sphere, so 452.16, so let's add that up and see what figure two is. So 678.24 plus 452.16. So I'm gonna write just, well, it's okay. So 1130.4 is its total volume, and it wants to know if it's twice the volume of figure one. All right, so the cone was 226, 08, and there are two of them. So 226.08 basically times 2, same thing. So 452.16. Alright, so this says, is this number twice the volume of this one? Doesn't look like it, but let's check. So 452.16 times 2. Oops, sorry. 452.16 times 2, so no, that is false. Okay. All right, then it says the volume of figure 4 is equal to the volume of, the, of a sphere with a radius of 6. All right, well, let's look at 4. 4 was the cylinder, which was the 678.24, and the cone, which was 226.08, so 226.08 plus 678.24, so our figure 4 is 904.32, alright, and it wants to know that it's equal to the volume of a sphere with a radius of 6, so that would be 4 thirds times pi times 6 cubed. Let's see what that is. So 4 thirds times 3.14 times 6 cubed. 90432, 90432. So yes, that is true. All right, C, the volume of a sphere with a radius of six is exactly twice the volume of figure one. Well, we just found this volume of the sphere, so we're looking at this. It says twice the volume of figure one. So if we double 452.16 times two, 904.32, yes. All right, D, it says the volume of figure three is exactly one third the volume of figure two. All right, so we've got the half sphere, the 452.16, plus the cone, 226.08, 452, and the 226. All right, so that totals 678.24. And it said is exactly one third the volume of figure two. No, you can see that if I had three of these, it would be way more than that because I know three times six is 18, so it's way more. Okay. So false on that. And then the last one, the volume of figure three is equal to the volume of a cylinder with radius six and a height of 12. So let's do that math, so a cylinder, so pi r squared times height, and I'm using 3.14, so 3.14 times 6 squared times 12, 
is 1356.48, and they are comparing it to figure three. It says the volume of figure three is equal to the volume of a cylinder with six and a height. These two are not equal, so false. Okay. All right, let's keep trucking. That was a lot of math, but you got your calculators. You just have to hang in there, persevere. All right, so at the top of page 678, it says, Geraldo is making candles. He melts wax in a cylindrical pitcher and then pours the wax into spherical molds. The pitcher has a diameter of six inches, and the, the wax in the pitcher is seven inches deep. How many spherical candles can he make? All right, so let's first find out how much this will hold. So it's a cylinder. So we're looking at pi r squared times height. So 3.14. Now they gave us diameter. I don't want diameter. I want radius. So 3 squared. And then height, it said the wax in the pitcher is 7 inches deep. So there's my height. All right, so let's see what this gives us. So 3.14 times 3 squared times 7. So my volume of the pitcher is right at that. All right, then we've got a spherical mold. So it's not just the half sphere, it's the whole thing. So 4 thirds pi r cubed. So 4 thirds. 3.14, and I only want radius, so we only need 2 cubed. So I'm looking at 4 thirds times 3.14 times 2 cubed. So that's right at 33.49. All right, and it says, how many of these candles can he make um, with each mole of the diameter? So basically, you're taking all of this. How many of these can we pour? So we're going to do 197.82 and divide it by 33.49 because each spherical mold will take that much. So 197.82 divided by 33.49. And it says 5.9, but because we're making a spherical mold, we have to have a complete number. So I can't, this is like having nine-tenths of a person. We don't round up. we got to round down. So we could make five of those candles. Now you have to round down. We don't have enough for the sixth candle. All right, then number seven, it says the volume of a blank with a radius R and a height H is this. So, what is this the formula for? A cone. Okay. All right, and then number eight, it says that the volume of a sphere with 36 pi, what is the diameter of that sphere? So, if we've got volume of a sphere, what is that? They're telling us it's 36 pi, so we don't have to calculate with pi. So those just kind of cancel each other out. So I'm left with 36 equals 4 thirds r cubed. Anytime you have a fraction and next to your variable, to get rid of it, you're, you're dividing by a fraction, but that means you're multiplying by the reciprocal. And if we do 3 fourths times 36, we'll get 27. So 27 equals R cubed. So we're saying what got cubed to give us the 27. So you're really just looking for the cubed root. And 27 was one of those cubed roots you were supposed to memorize. And that's 3. So 3 is your R, but it said what is the diameter of the sphere so if 3 is the radius, 6 is the diameter. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop there with you. 
Um, just look in Google Classroom for your next assignment. Thanks a lot.